Oh, that was a good shot. This week on Kentucky Field. Got him. We are pawnside with Rachel Kroon. Hunting frogs and learning about the state's R3 programs. Tell me what R3 is. Next, wild pigs are one species that we simply do not want in the bluegrass. Wild pigs displace our native wildlife species. They outcompete them for food sources. We'll find out how to keep them at bay. Then, ain't nothing better than getting out in this cold water. These hot summer months are perfect for wade fishing a creek. It's all next on Kentucky a field. There we go. It's a pretty fish. Beautiful. This pond is plum floated with frogs. They're everywhere in here. <laughs> Yeah, this is a good fish right here. Really good fish. Come here, girl. Hey, boy. That's a big rabbit. Nice job. Yes! Yes! <laughs> My first musket. First say Leo. Yeah, we're here to get the keeper. Here it goes. Boom! Oh, oh. Oh. Wow, that happened. Hello, and welcome to Kentucky Field. I'm your host, Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. First up, let's hit the water in search of frogs and find out more about what R3 has to offer. We're out here today with a very familiar face, and we're in Shelby County getting ready to do one of my all-time favorite activities, and that's gigging or shooting frogs. Yeah, I'm so excited, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much fun. I know you've done this a lot, and you've taken kids out shooting and gigging frogs. What a great way to introduce someone to the outdoors. It is a lot of fun. It's something great to do in the summer. Yeah. So the kids are out, the weather's great, yeah. everything's wonderful. We're gonna have so much fun. <laughs> it is a lot of fun. You know, there's a lot of ways you can do this. You can do it on a rod and reel, you can do it with a gig, you can do it with a rifle, you can shoot them with a bow. Tonight, I brought a couple air rifles and you... Brought gigs. I've never done anything but gig frogs. Okay. Well, I take that back. I've caught a couple with my hands, but I've never shot one with a gun before, so we're gonna try that tonight. I'm super pumped about that. You mentor so many people and get them involved in the outdoors. Yeah, I actually took my daughter on her first deer hunt. It was a blast, so much fun. <laughs> she still talks about it all the time. Your passion and love for the outdoors and mentoring really transitioned perfectly for you because recently you started a new position with the Department of Fish and Wildlife. You're now a Department of Fish and Wildlife employee. Yep. And you are heading up our R3 program, which tell me what R3 is. So R3 is recruitment, retention, and reactivation. So okay. if you've never hunted or fished before, we're gonna try and introduce it to you. If you're doing it, we just wanna make sure that you come back. And maybe if you left for a while or haven't done it in a few years, we wanna get you back into it and show you how much fun it is, how mm. it's a great hobby to have. Mm. and. Hopefully we'll get some frog legs yeah. so we can eat some later too. And if you've never had frog legs, this ranks right up there one of my absolute favorite things to eat. We got about 20 minutes till it's gonna be dark enough to kind of start making our way around. Mm -hmm. With those air rifles, you can sometimes start shooting them before it's completely dark and you don't even really have to spotlight them. So let's go get our gear. It's gonna be fun. Let's get after them. It's, it's gonna be a blast. Yeah. Well, Rachel, we got way too much gear. <laughs> I brought this little net. Probably wonder what in the world is he just gonna hand grab frogs? And I may grab a frog, yeah. but this is actually if we shoot one that's out in the water just a little ways. Well, I'm super excited about trying to shoot one, so I think we should try that first. All right, hey. That sounds good. Listen, you hear him? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get down here and take a look and see if we can not get you loaded up. We're gonna try to score your first frog with an air rifle right off the bat. Okay. We're just gonna leave these right here for now, and let's walk down and take a look. Sounds good. Oh yeah, you can see all their eyes. That's a good frog, Rachel. Why don't you go ahead and get loaded up? Okay. I probably need to sneak up a tiny bit closer with this gun. Oh, wrong way. I don't know why it's not pulling. Maybe I didn't cock it all the way. 
<laughs> Dang it. That's all right. He'll be back up here. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't cock the pellet rifle all the way. And I think that frog would have been close enough for me to gig. That's okay. There'll be more. Get ready, because we're getting ready to see some big ones. I think like right in here by this big pipe, Chad, there should be a few sitting up here. Well, right there's one right there, but I believe that one's a hair small. That'll be next year's frog, what do you think? Yeah. We'll go on around, see if we can't find another one. That one looks a little bigger. It's not a big frog, but it might be good for your first one with an air rifle. I think this distance is probably pretty good, right? Yep. Oh, that was a good shot. This is what the net's for right here. I'll tell you one thing, those air rifles will flat stone them. <laughs> That's crazy. Frog number one. Heck yeah. You know what? You get 15, I get 15. Let's try to get another one. Okay. I missed him. Got him. Didn't hit him where I wanted to, but the old pellet gun still took him down. That's a better frog. Oh, it actually went in right where I was aiming, but it came out here. Look, yeah. you think that doesn't do a number on them? It's really perfect for frogs, those air rifles are. Let's get loaded up again, okay. try to get us another one. I'll tell you one thing, the worst mistake you could ever make is take one of these air rifles and go, oh, it's a BB gun, they don't have to be safe with them. Yeah. I would hate to get shot with one of these. It could be really, really, really bad news. Absolutely. You gotta treat these just like a regular firearm. Keep them well, on the station. Well, they for sure are. You smoking. Oh, Rachel, right there. Okay. You want to shine or shoot? You're up, I'll shine, you shoot. Let me make my way up here this way just a little bit. Ready? Yeah. All right, he's down and we got another one right here. Nice job, Rachel. Laying right there. Thank you. Look at that one. Look at the white belly on that joker right there, Rachel. That's our chicken from earlier. That is. I'll hold that light. Okay, you want this light here? Yep. Nice shot, Chad. That wasn't as big as I thought, but we're gonna take it. Yep, he'll eat. I've had good frog legs at restaurants. They don't compare. No, not I even mean, close. When you go get fresh caught frog legs instead of farm raised, there's something about them, they're just different. Yeah, for sure. All right guys, that frog's hit, and he's not too deep to still get. There we go. Heck yeah. Good frog right there. That'll eat. <laughs> oh, there's a big one in the water. Was I high on that? You know, I don't know, but that frog is gonna come back and we're gonna get that frog here in just a minute. He's on the bank now. Do I need to shoot him again? Yep. All right. Did I hit him or? Is he swimming? <laughs> He's gonna come right back up to this bank. Yep. We got a blood trail. I've never seen a frog get away and leave a puddle like that. Oh no, it's crazy. That frog's coming back to the bank. I don't believe it needs another pellet. We're just gonna go up there and try to stick this net on it. Got him. Good job. Well, did you see that? Did he get out of there? He snuck out the side. Dang it. Oh, there were two frogs. Oh, we got him. Okay. Here we go. This is that big one that we shot earlier. Heck yeah. That's a good frog right there. Look at that. The shot on this hit right here. Yeah, that's a good shot though. That's a Look great that. big frog. That's a good one. That's a really good frog. Heck yeah, he's gonna eat good. Hey Rach, we got a couple more ponds. So let's go regroup and I think I'm gonna leave the scoped air rifle. We'll take the other air rifle you got there. We'll lighten our load a little bit. Maybe we'll carry the gigs next time around. Yeah, we'll see if we can gig a couple. Let's go make it happen. Sounds good. I think you may have it. Got him. What do you think, Rach? Can you make that shot? I'm gonna try. Oh! Good shooting, Chad. Got him. 
Nice job, Rachel. Look at that, that's a good frog. I think you got him. Yes, that's a good job right there. Not easy to get through those cattails like that. This is so fun. No, oh, there's a big one. Good job. You got him? Yeah. I can't hardly see. Oh yeah. There we go. Good job, buddy. Nice. Oh, you smoked him. <laughs> well, Rach, it's been great. I really it's do appreciate really it. Fun. Hey, for someone who wanted to know more about R3 and how to get involved and how to reach out and learn a little more about the outdoors, what's the best way for them to do that? Go to the website fw.ky.gov and then if you click on the education tab, you'll find a learn to hunt, fish and shoot tab. That's your best place to start. So there they'll take you to like our hook and cook classes or field to fork. We've also started putting together basic learn to hunt and fish information on our website too. Well, I'll tell you what, tonight was a perfect basic learn how to gather frogs. <laughs> Yeah. And you know what? We got a skillet full of goodness right here. Yes, we do. I can't wait. Many states in the southeast are dealing with a wild pig problem, but our biologists here in the state of Kentucky, well, they are winning that battle. So Terry, we're out here in Henry County again, pretty close to a location where you trapped pigs a few years ago and showed us some of your eradication efforts. Give me an update on how the pigs are doing here in the state of Kentucky. Well, we've had a lot of success in Kentucky. Pigs are at the lowest numbers they've been in the last decade. We've got an aggressive eradication campaign in partnership with Wildlife Services. To have a trapping effort, you have to get a phone call first. And these phone calls are not coming from the people that a lot of people would expect it to be. These are hunters and landowners that are saying, man, having pigs on my property is no good. So Mark, wild pigs and corn growing do not go hand in hand. That do doesn't work well, no. <laughs> a lot of damage really quick. So tell me a little bit about what you've experienced with wild pigs here in Henry County. We had a problem, it was down the river, they started coming in, didn't really know at first what it was, and then it got to getting worse and worse. And you're talking about just literally knocking they the stalks They just actually down. come in, knock the stalks down, and just knock the corn off. It looks like a bush hog went over it when they come in, and before it started catching some of them, they were getting like a half acre a night, just one group. They were just cleaning the fields. They really mess up hunting opportunities as well. Wild pigs displace our native wildlife species. They displace deer and turkey. They outcompete them for food sources, especially acorns. You think you're gonna hunt near a white oak tree and have a successful hunt, and then all you see are pigs. For a corn producer, did you have a piece of property that were either total losses, or you just said, hey, I'm not gonna raise corn there anymore? We didn't have total losses, but it was starting to get to that point, and then that's when we contacted the Fish and Wildlife to come in. We'll do a landowner visit, we'll look for damage, and we'll set cameras and bait up in the areas where there's sign and monitor the situation. And if we can get pigs on bait, then we'll set a trap. We used to have traps that had trip wires and rooting sticks, and they were would catch maybe half of the group of pigs. Pigs live in sounders. So what we'll do is we'll try to catch that entire sounder. We're not really exactly sure how pigs hit the landscape. We think people brought them in for hunting opportunities. You know, they're not that easy to hunt, and if you go out and you shoot a couple of these pigs, they get smart fast. That's what I was told. In fact, I was told by Fish of My Life, don't shoot them, don't scatter them. Let them come in and let them catch them in the traps. You just said the most important thing is don't shoot, call, because you really want to get a trap out that you can remotely trigger. And that's how we've caught the last group of pigs that we think we've got here in the landscape in Henry County. We're caught using a remote trap and that's really the way to do it. Terry, we've come in here today and this has been a huge success for us. We've captured what may be one of the last remaining sounder groups in Henry County. Right now we're getting ready to test a boar for diseases. Wild pigs carry swine, brucellosis, and pseudo rabies, and they are not found in uh, domestic swine in the state, and we're trying to keep that from happening. So we're gonna test the blood samples for those diseases. So Dax is gonna be doing a heart stick to draw blood. Notice we do have PP on, latex gloves, and glasses to protect ourselves from diseases. I typically take 
four vials of blood and we'll spin those down to eight cryo vials. We've been in Henry County now for, what, five years, four or yeah. five years? And yeah. It's, a, it's actually been a really rewarding experience here to, to realize we've made a huge difference for the landowners. People with crops and soybeans and corn who are having trouble with the pigs just destroying their property. So Mike, you're a farmer here in Henry County. Yes. What was some of the worst damage you've seen? Back in 2016, they wiped probably 80% of a field out over there overnight. So oh there's like goodness. probably 15 pigs in there eating. You've also seen damage to some of your neighbors in their yard. They just root their yards up too. You've seen that as well, right? Yes, they just took like a big strip in their yard and just, I mean, just like you plowed it or something. It's estimated that swine in the United States creates almost $2 billion worth of damage to crops and property. This is exciting, thinking we've got the last sounder, thinking that we've eradicated the largest population of pigs in Kentucky. A lot of sleepless nights, but been well worth the effort. And again, rewarding to know that we're helping people in the county. So we also do a DNA or genetic sampling on these pigs, and it's to get a database to to hopefully figure out where these pigs are coming from and what strain of pig or what genetics they come from. You know, these pigs may come from North Carolina, they may come from Tennessee, and we're taking these samples to kind of figure that out. These boars like we have here, they typically will roam for miles looking for sows to breed with. They cover a lot of ground and they're really hard to track. These traps have been really successful in getting rid of all these pigs. Traps reset. So that's it, our trap is set. Tell me about why you chose this particular location. Typically, if you can find a wallow, you can put out some corn and you'll find the pigs. Now that you've got it set, you're back out of here and you'll watch this thing for a few days. And what happens if a couple pigs come in? I've got a camera up here in the tree. It's motion sensored. A pig will go into the trap. My camera will sense that pig and take a picture. And then that picture is then relayed to my phone. So I text my camera to drop the door and... Bam, you drop the gate and you know you've got them. Once they're in there, they'll finish up their feeding and they'll pretty much be there whenever you get here. That's right, they'll be here waiting. It's high tech, but it's the way to go. I mean, it's been a true success story. Are you looking for an updated fishing report or maybe find a new fishing buddy? Check out FKLRC on Facebook. Well, Adam, this is kind of your cup of tea right here. Yeah, man, I love creek fishing. <laughs> yeah, we've got so many creeks like this throughout the state of Kentucky that have got tons of fish in them. And this one here is one of my favorites. Good looking spot, that's for sure. Well, Adam, I think we'll just drop our gear right here. Sounds good, man. You know, th this, is a, this is a typical creek or stream that can be found anywhere in the state of Kentucky. And you have kind of started a, a way for people to find locations like this, share techniques yes, at, throughout the state of Kentucky. Tell me a little bit about it. I uh, started up, it's called FKLRC. It stands for Fishing Kentucky Lakes, Rivers, and Creeks. I started that up back in 2014 just to kind of try to bring together the state of Kentucky fishing community. How many members you have now? On, on uh, gaining up on 22,000. So uh, 22,000 people, people from every county. Every county all over the state. So if you really want to get into fishing and you, you're just not sure where you want to go or you need a little bit of help, but if you're involved in social media, you can find you on Facebook, right? That's right. And they, what do they need to search for to get it? Just type in FKLRC on the Facebook search. It'll take you right to it. All right. Let's get after it. Let's do it, man. All the way in, fully submerged wade fishing. Ain't nothing better than getting out in this cold water. Man, I tell you what, you get out here in the middle of the summertime and it's 90 degrees outside, getting in this water waist deep is nothing more refreshing. What do you think fish number one's gonna be? Did you bust one? I don't know what I got here. Smallmouth. Nice. 
It's a little joker, but uh, we'll take it. I'll tell you, this stream, not too far away, runs into the Kentucky River. And these smallmouth can run to, like this joker, eight inches, all the way up to, I have seen them over four pounds caught right here. You know, Adam, even though you've started and uh, moderate Facebook page all about fishing Kentucky, I bet you have learned some really cool new fishing holes just by being a member of this site, haven't you? I have, man. I've learned some, some new spots, learned a lot of good techniques and tips, made some good friends off of it. Pretty awesome just to be able to get in contact with everybody around the state. Telling you what, it's getting deep, deep. Yeah. I almost think that we may need to take a look at that next hole up. One black bass species away from catching the trifecta. That's right, man. He thinks he's king of this creek. In a couple years, he might be right. There we go. Yeah, what's that, Smalley? Oh, Smalley. There you go. Isn't that crazy? You fish the deep pockets, you think the fish are gonna be right here for sure. Lo and behold, you move up in real super shallow water, and that's where they're at. It's a nice, pretty fish. What have I got here? Lord have mercy. I don't know what this is. Come off right there. Did you see that? I saw it, man. I don't know what that what? was. That's crazy. Whatever it was, it was big. You know, creek fishing is all about setting your expectations. I mean, there are some big fish in here. It's really about just going out and, and enjoying yourself and just kind of setting your expectations. That's what it's all about, man, is going out and having a good time. So that even you can come out here and get skunk, man, it's, it's awesome to get out here. Being lucky enough to catch a couple of fish is just bonus. That's right. Here we go. Oh. A little nice. smally. Wondering if it was his great granddaddy that uh, took me for a ride a while ago. It could have been. <laughs> it wasn't you. <laughs> Man, for someone that thinks I want to get into fishing, going online and finding out some different techniques and some different species to fish for locally is a really good way to do it. And then finding some techniques and where to fish, there's a lot of people out there willing to help you. I mean, look at this. Tonight, it, both got off work, came out here, just had an hour or two to jump in a creek and a stream. Why not? Don't pass those opportunities up to get out and fish. Something like this today, you have to fish close water. Yep. Here we go. Oh, look at that. Nice. That is beautiful. Oh, I love when those smallmouth come up and jump like that. Look at there. Very nice, man. What a pretty fish. This is a respectable fish. You're talking about a 13, 14 inch fish. Strong fighting current fish. Probably made its way from the Kentucky River. Ran up in here because there's so much bait. Good looking fish, man. Now let's check in and see who else has been out having fun in this week's Ones That Didn't Get Away. Check out the size of this big gobbler taken by Spartacus. This bird had been hunted for three years and was finally taken in LaRue County, Kentucky. Here we have 10-year-old Jameson West who took this nice turkey in Pulaski County, Kentucky. Check out the nice bird and that beautiful single action shotgun. Here we have Bobby Best of Hardin County. He took this nice bird, weighed 21 pounds with an 11 inch beard. Hey, you're never too old to enjoy turkey hunting. Check out 83-year-old John Davis of Louisville who took this nice 25-pound turkey at Fort Knox. Here we have Cade McCulley who took his second bird in the spring, a nice tom that was taken near Union Star, Kentucky. Nice job. Check out the size of this nice channel catfish caught by Carter Tranum. This fish was 32 inches long and was caught in Breckenridge County. Here we have a beautiful picture of a nice shellcracker that was caught at Lake Barkley by Kevin Large of E-Town. Nice job. 
If you saw something on tonight's program that you'd like to know more about, it's right at your fingertips. Log on to fw.ky.gov and search for R3 or log on to your favorite fishing forum. And remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission and thank the landowner. Until next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles, and I hope to see you in the woods or on the water.